Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. Let's do a little recap on my trough since I'm ready to finally plant in it. It's been quite a few months. You know, I set it up with my little buddy at the time and I was getting it all ready and I wanted to make sure that I set it up where it wasn't going to cost me a lot of money because a lot of you told me it cost you quite a few hundred dollars to fill that up. Two, three hundred dollars and I can see that. I'm going to fill it up where it's going to cost me under 20. So since the beginning when I started to fill it, I continued to fill it more and more because it's settling, putting leaves in so I from other toads, even from the ground. I thought it was done and then I found more kitchen scraps. I would say it's ready. I went around, I had buckets around with some decomposing kitchen scraps because I wasn't sure where to put it. And now it's ready. I'm going to top this with some soil from another container on the other side of the yard. And then I'll decide if I'm going to put one bag of potting soil in, which I think I might, and then get my plants growing. So before I went ahead and put the potting soil in, I kept putting in more leaves and whatever I wanted to, to get it a little bit up there on the top. So look, the moon's gonna come up soon. I'm working in the dark. I'm done with this. Look how far up it is of leaves. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump in, I've got this soil that's quite a few years old I found that was laying around. And I'm gonna go ahead and probably put the whole bag in of miracle Grow. And that will be it. Then I can start to plant. I'm going to leave the walking onions. They're so, doing so good. And they're in their own pots on the ground. So let's get that together so I can get this thing planted once and for all. So now that we're in a heat wave, I have been working more in the garden in the evening, which is really cool. It's really nice. I'm kind of changing my plans as we go because I can change it later in the fall and plant different things. But I'm adding in here more kitchen scraps. And I went with that old bag that I had sitting forever of potting soil. There was a little bit left. And with the miracle Grow. I'm going to only add in a half a bag, meaning that this cost me less than $10 to fill up. Everything is from my garden. You should see my daughter's. She filled hers up and now she's got watermelon plants in there and they should really take off now that they've got a great established root system. I'll put a link to her trough so you can see that too. Look, the solar lights are on. It's nighttime. You want to see it's really nighttime, look. It's dark. You can't tell. The camera is actually lighting it up quite well. But it's dark outside. See the city lights? That's the city lights. Look at that. Cool. Now you can only see it if I press this button. And there it is. Cool, finally. So now it's morning. And we're about 90, 95. So I'm going to do a little bit more work here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of situating on how I'm going to put my tomato plants in. Now I'm going to use pots with open bottoms. It, they could have just a great big hole in the bottom, but I, I have these. And I'm going to situate them inside. So this way when I water with the heat, I can fill each of those pots up and the plant will get the water directly to the roots where it needs it. If I just had a plant here, and I watered here, I don't know where the water's gonna go. It could go anywhere, it can disperse, and then the roots don't get it, it'll dry up too quickly. This works for me. Now here are the cement blocks I made. I made two of them, that one and this one. This one is perfect. See how I can take the steak out and put any size tomato steak I want in there? It could be short, it could be tall. This is the mistake. This one, I went ahead and put the irrigation tubing in, well, I pushed it in. The tubing, the irrigation tubing probably didn't go to the bottom and see this has ridges. The cement is holding it real tight. So this one is now permanent unless I wanna break the cement block and I don't want to. This is perfect because once I bury the cement block in there, it's gonna really hold. Let me show you exactly how I made it in case you need to make it. You can use it in the ground. If you've got soil that's too loose and everything is moving, you can use it in small containers, big containers. It works fantastic. Here's how I made it. So the first thing I'm gonna do to make sure it stays nice and straight, I'm gonna leave this in for right now. So here I used a plain old milk carton and Gary was cementing. I didn't need a lot of cement. So I just used what was left over and I packed it in the milk carton. Now that's an irrigation tubing in there and the tomato steak is holding the irrigation tubing really nice and straight. So I just packed it in and after I was all done, I just sat it somewhere, just let it dry and set. 
and make sure your stick stays nice and straight so you can use that in your trough or raised bed. And then next day, you just peel it away. And now you can put any size tomato steak in it, and it's not gonna go anywhere because you're gonna drop that in your raised bed, and that cement will really hold, like a chain link fence. Yeah, think of the posts with a chain link fence and what's underneath a block of cement. Look how cool that is. So now you have a miniature version and you can set that in any type of raised bed, even in the ground if you wanted to. If the ground was loose and your stake wasn't holding, this is gonna hold it just perfectly. And note here that I pulled the tomato stake out already. Now here I'm gonna show you my mistake. I had pushed the tomato stake in there too far in and it hit and touched the cement. And it was really hard to get out. So you wanna make sure as soon as it's set, when it's still not real firm, to get your stake out so you can use any size you want. So as soon as the cement is firm, just pull the stake out and then let it dry completely without the stake in it. Now here I'm gonna dig the soil away and I'm going to put my block in here. So I just have to set it in there and cover it up and I'll do the other one too. So I've got the cement posts now in. They'll settle with everything else and now I'm just going to get my tomatoes in. So right now with the heat it's hard to think of how I want to get all this done. I'm going to probably put a sun gold in here. This one is, let's see, sweet 100. So this will be red. And the sun gold will be orange. That's one of my cuttings off my own plant. And then this one, I believe, is a cherry lemon, which so will be yellow. It'll give nice color. I'm going to start with three. I'm going to get them planted. And then I already put my irrigation tubing in, which was really easy. See, I just slid it in. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to end up putting more irrigation tubing is I can string the tomatoes. All I have to do is simply take some yarn and as they grow, kind of tie them on and let them go up. The tomatoes won't need any shade. I don't believe so, but we'll have to see. So for now, I'm gonna do it that way. There is one more thing that I'm going to put in here and that is this. I went ahead and got a pitcher from Walmart. You can buy it anywhere. Look at that. See that? This is what got me excited. I saw that hole and thought, wait a minute. You know how I get the pictures from Dollar Tree, which is perfectly fine? Well, this one, you bury it. I've got all the holes around it. I'm going to feed kitchen scraps in as needed. I can even put compost tea in there. But once this is buried, pretty much all the way up to however deep I want to put it, I now have a place to put a tomato stake and it will be well anchored in there. And that is what really got me excited. I probably will start with one, but as time goes on for the tomatoes, I may add in another one, but it gives me a really good place to put any type of post so I can secure whatever plant I want. So let me get this done in the heat of the day and then get this well watered. So there I went out in the sun. Oh my gosh, almost 100 degrees and got it done. Personally, I love the heat, not a fan of the cold in any way. So I went ahead and I'm planting here all three tomatoes. But in the meantime, instead of playing music, I'm not a music person, I'm going to just talk because I know there's going to be a lot of things that I wanted to say and I forgot. I took the plant stakes from the plants that I bought at the nursery and I taped them to the irrigation tubing using painter's tape because that lasts for a year out there. This way I can look up, I don't have to go digging in the soil looking for it, and I'll know the yellow tomato and the sweet 100. I'll be able to look right at the tag and know what it is. The other one is the sun gold, I'll remember that. My thing here is, I think it'll look really cool having all different colored tomatoes growing. And I'll be able to step back later and decide if I want to add anything else to it or change it all up in the fall. And who knows what I'll do with this next spring. I managed to get this whole thing done for under $10. I only needed a half a bag of soil. So I've got the other half a bag to do whatever I want with. And here I'm trimming the tomatoes. We're gonna trim it all the way down. There's a few suckers on there on the yellow tomato that I'm probably gonna go drop in some water and get some roots on it. But all in all, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I was thinking of putting onions, but I decided, nah, not right now, not regular onions. It's too hot and I think I've got 
enough in there. The pots are going to be fantastic to have in there because I'll be able to go with a hose or a watering can and just water each pot and know that each tomato is going to have enough water. And those pitchers are fabulous. But don't worry, the ones from Dollar Tree or 99 cent store, whatever pitchers you have work. I just love that this one's got a hole that I can put a stake in. But isn't this cool? All done with soil under $10. So for now, it's all done in the heat of the day. It didn't take me long at all. I did put some yarn here, and I'll show you how I did this because now this plant can't go anywhere, and this one too is snug there. So here you'll see I put a double amount of yarn on. In other words, I went across, wrapped it around the irrigation tubing, came back and tied it in a knot, and it's not going anywhere. Now the plants can still move and I really don't want them to touch. In other words, I want them to grow nice and straight. So you just take another piece of yarn, whatever way you want. You don't have to get fancy, whatever works for you. And you just tie a knot. You're going to do it on both sides of the plant. This way the plant can still blow in the wind. It can still move. It's not going to damage it, but it's got that little square in between the two pieces of yarn. See that the double string, but it's tied. So it can't lean anymore. It can only go straight. Up now and you can continue to do the long runners on both sides that go across a trough here and you can continue to stake up your plants that way for pennies I had some bark laying around so I just laid that right now to protect the soil all in all is good I need to give it a good water I could spot in some onions if I want I do have regular white and yellow onions or I could just simply go through and grab some of the walking onions that are falling off. See how this one's dry? Let me tear off the ends. And I could just spot some of those through and put them maybe up against the pot. And they'll come through later. Where's the other one? There's the other one. Let's see, we wanna make sure that point is up. Let's take that off, that little piece. And look at that. Now they'll pop up because they don't take up a whole lot. And now we just wanna make sure in the heat of the day at 100 degrees and I can keep them well watered and you know what else is nice about putting rocks and bark in when you water it you're not disturbing the soil you can water the the wood or the rocks and that's it so I hope you got some tips and ideas on how to do this I can continue to put the yarn and build it up as the plants get bigger for now that's all I need and I already let me see have put in some leaves in there so it will help feed the plants it will bring in all the earthworms that are in there they'll come into that too to feed because what it does is it makes a natural worm farm and it will leave water always around there and remember these have open bottoms so the roots are going to go all the way down inside this trough don't forget to check out my daughter's because she's going to be growing watermelon in hers and it's beautiful. She set hers up a while ago. Even though a lot of the fruit hasn't set yet, it's just starting because it's been too cold at night. Now that our temperatures are quite warm, her fruit should start to set and then she should end up with watermelon. But you'll be able to compare to see how she set hers up. Maybe that will give you ideas. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And if you're putting in a pitcher, which is a mini worm house contraption that I make. You can go check out the videos and it really helps the plants. Don't forget to give it a good water when you are doing your plants because that too helps the earthworms with water. It will seep in, see how it's seeping around and it's really gonna make your plants really happy. Bye-bye. Oh, how I love my pitchers. Plant food daily and you're creating living soil.